The summer is when parents have to be particularly alert to the dangers of drowning deaths. Children younger than five are among the most likely to die in pools. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says nearly 70 percent of child deaths happen when they're not expected to be in the water. Kids often find ways to slip away from adults. Olympic ski racing champion Bodie Miller and his wife Morgan lost their 19-month-old daughter Emmy in June. Now they're trying to prevent other families from experiencing the same tragedy. She would walk into the room and everyone would want to know, who is this little blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl who just is this massive ball of energy and light and love. You couldn't believe that she had that balance of, of sort of personality and patience and all the things that you would want. Emmy was playing at a neighbor's house when the 19-month-old slipped out unseen, fell into their pool, and drowned. And I opened the door, and she was floating face down in the pool. Every time I close my eyes at night to go to sleep, it replays in my head. But it, it happens so fast. On the same day, Nicole Hughes lost her three-year-old son, Levi, in a similar drowning accident. Like Emmy, Levi also found his way outside to a pool. When I look at pictures of him, it's so overwhelming to think I will not have any new pictures of him ever. Now, the two moms, bonded by tragedy, are uniting with water safety advocates to prevent these drownings. A lot of parents have reached out to me saying, like, I put my child down for a nap, and that was the last I saw my child alive. Since Emmy's death, Bodie's been in the water with his three-year-old son, Nash, as he learns self-rescue techniques. Wow, that was a long boat. <laughs> Not just our kids, but our friends um, have brought their kids over, and we've kind of been attacking it as a group. And I think it's been, it's been really eye-opening to see. Eye-opening for them, and they hope for others as they push for change. I cannot let his death have been in vain. I can. I have to fight like hell to do everything for all of us to fight so that no one else experiences this. Bodie and Morgan Miller and Nicole Hughes join us now. Also with us is Dr. Ben Hoffman from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Good morning to all of Good you. Morning. Morning. And thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. And we've spoken on the phone, but again, we are so sorry for what's happened to you. Bodie, let me ask you, I mean, what do you hope people will learn by sharing your story, your family's tragedy? Yeah, I hope people, sort of raise the awareness of, of what the danger is. I think people have a natural awareness of water dangers. I mean, as, as a human being, we know it's not our natural element, but um, there are specific things that just that knowledge alone is a really powerful tool. And I think that knowledge is not common practice right now, that you know these drownings are happening not during swim time. I think as a parent, those little tidbits of knowledge are things that we can share with each other. And once it becomes you know, something that everyone's aware of, we can really prevent these these kind of tragedies. And that's, at the end of the day, you know, what happened to us is, is horrible for us. And I think a lot of people shared our, our pain in that, but um, we want to try to make it not happen to other people. And Morgan and Nicole, you both told me separately that you couldn't have done this without the other, that you couldn't be speaking out without the other to do. Bodhi yeah. said that you're motivated by emotion. I'm, I'm so touched by that. And what do you say to people that say, this could never happen to me? This is what I think is so important for people to understand yeah, how Morgan. quickly this can happen. It, uh, you know, and I, I, every time I would read as a parent, you know, I would read all these stories and I automatically always look for the loophole. Yes. You know, how, okay, well, this isn't me because, oh, they live yes. here, so that's yes. why this isn't me. We're good, okay. Yes. You know, or I would never let that happen. Okay, not me. This tragedy's not mine. Yes. Um, but it, it actually does. It really happens. And I mean, we are involved, attentive parents who, loved our children. We mm -hmm. love our children and, and keep them safe. So no one is, tragedy does not play fair. I mean, and just to, to make sure you are aware at all times and that you spread that knowledge to, to your, your friends as well so that this becomes a village mentality, truly, that we are always all looking out for each other's kids and spreading this awareness like we do in other things with yeah. car seats and with mm -hmm. yeah. with everything else that we share with. Yeah, with tragedy is not fair. I, I like that line. And you, and Morgan, you had said that you know people don't understand a how quickly this could happen, even to the most vigilant parent. And have you had many people coming up to you saying this almost happened to me or this happened to me 
or because of you this didn't happen to me? Hundreds of people have reached out to us. Um, but I think touching briefly on what Nicole was saying is I think a lot of parents feel like it's not going to happen to them because they think it's going to happen during swim times when they're out there watching their children. There's all these people. But one of the most surprising things that we've learned um, is the times that this truly is an issue and how many parents have reached out to us and said, I put my child down for a nap. That was the last time I saw my child alive. Mm -hmm. And understanding that when, even though you're not by the pool, that if you don't have that visual stimulant of water, um, it's almost like out of sight, out of mind. But understanding that just putting your child down for a nap, like they are curious, they are brilliant, yes. amazing little people, and they can find ways outside, outdoors, out doggy doors, out windows. Yeah. So really being aware that even though you're not swimming, it can still happen. Dr. Hoffman, I think, I think so many of us are surprised by this statistic that drowning is the second leading cause of death for children one to four. Why is it we're not aware of this? Yeah. So it's actually the leading cause of, the number of one, sorry, yeah. yes. unintentional death for kids under the age of four. Um, I think some of it has to do with risk perception um, and just the fact that we don't talk about it a lot. It happens. Um, what does that mean, it, risk perception? We don't perceive it as a risk? Yes, okay. that, uh -huh. that it, because we're around water a lot, um, that people don't recognize the, the constant threat that it represents. It really comes down to the fact that you can't drown proof a child and that we need to be thinking about ways that we can get the word out and educate. We need to think about policies and ways we can enforce those, and we need to think about engineering solutions so that we can automatically protect kids and families so that we don't have to think about it as much. I think, Morgan and Nicole, everything I've learned about the two of you is not only your bond, but you are united in trying to make a change. You, want, you don't want anybody else to have to go through what you want. And so you have a specific action plan. What do you want help from doctors, nurses, others? What do you want them to do? Um, well, one of the things that really inspires us was a quote that we read that when women, moms come together, parents come together, anything can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And so we are really really hoping that people are going to get involved and there are going to be other moms, babysitters, nannies, grandparents, teachers that are going to help us spread the word. So not just relying on the AAP and pediatricians, but having this just be a change in society, a change in our mindset to have this be a conversation. Um, That's exactly what happened with Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Yes. Exactly yeah. what happened and led to a change. It was a game changer for everybody. Wow. Mothers, That's exactly what happened. You met each other through this yes. tragedy. Mm -hmm. What has what has that support, the support you've given each other, meant to you? <laughs> I mean, it, it, to have, to have, you know, and, and it's horrible because we would not have met without losing our babies. So yeah. it, obviously there's that just to horrific part of it, but this goodness, this, to be able to have this connection, to, to have this reminder of the goodness that is still in the world um, through this relationship, through this friendship, with both of them, and, and the and to have um, is is truly it's been a lifeline. I mean, I, I can't imagine not only this this movement, this conversation that we're that we're starting about about drowning prevention, but from a grief standpoint, and just mm -hmm. knowing that we are going to survive mm -hmm. this one second at a time. And even the together. moments that we don't, we know that it's just a moment, and that we. Uh, I don't know how, but we usually know when the other person is feeling mm -hmm. down. And grief is such an individual process that somehow we've been on the same page for most of this journey, which has been inspiring and amazing to be able to have someone besides, obviously, our spouses who have been in Removing the stigma is part of changing the conversation. It's mm -hmm. like yes. we have people come up to us who it's really hard to address. They don't know what to say, and they don't want to cause you more pain, and they don't want to you know, dodge around the subject. And the fact is breaking that stigma and making it a conversation that you can have with parents who have, you know, unfortunately experienced it firsthand mm -hmm. is, I think, one of those really important steps. And it helps to have people who there is no stigma there because they've gone through it as well, even yeah. though they're at different phases or whatever. It's an open conversation where you, you know that, you know, laughing and joking is not, doesn't mean it's gone and it doesn't right. mean, right. you know, it's just part of our lives now. So Odie and Morgan Miller, Nicole Hughes, Dr. Ben Hoffman, thank you all for being here this morning on mm -hmm. this, this just critical subject.